I know a few good stories. They take place in a corner of America that might seem familiar, yet still manages to surprise. The settings are spectacular, the characters compelling, the action exciting, the plot lines unpredictable. I'm Tom Richardson. Join me as I explore New England's great outdoors, from Candlewood Lake, Connecticut to Caribou, Maine, from the beaches of Cape Cod to the peaks of New Hampshire's White Mountains. Stories are waiting. Let's live them on Explore New England. Explore New England is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers, your local REI co-op. REI believes a life outside is fundamental to a life well lived. Visit NewEngland.com and Camping World. Additional funding and support for this episode provided by the Okemo Valley Chamber of Commerce. There are few things that Stan Swanier and Lee Whiting enjoy more than tearing through the snowy central Vermont landscape on snowmobiles. As members of the Chester Snowmobile Club, as well as the Vermont Association of Snow Travelers, or VAST, the two friends relish the chill air of winter when snow blankets the rolling hills, woods, and fields. Lee and Stan gave me a glimpse into their wintry world on a February visit to the Okemo Valley region of Vermont, which comprises the towns of Ludlow, Cavendish, Plymouth, Mount Holly, Shrewsbury, Chester, Weston, Londonderry, Grafton, Wethersfield, and Andover. Groomed snowmobile trails wind through the region as well as the entire state of Vermont linking with trail systems in other states, and even into Canada. But these trails don't just magically appear. An important aspect of our club is the, the trail system that we maintain. It uh, runs through uh, multiple towns. We maintain somewhere uh, a little bit shy, I believe, of 65 miles of trail. Uh, we have two groomers. We have a steel, ta uh, steel track tucker, and we also have a rubber track. And both of those have uh, certain uses based on snow conditions. The rubber track uh, early season and late season when snow is a little bit leaner. And then the uh, steel track has uh, got a great climbing ability when there's hard pack and good snow base. We've got a very, very dedicated, vo complete volunteer uh, grooming team. Everybody donates their time and uh, very, very engaged uh, with uh, keeping our trails in tip top shape. After riding through the woods and fields for a bit, we arrived at a former chairlift station at the top of Glebe Mountain that had been transformed into a cozy cabin, complete with a beer keg weather vane. Well, that was a cool trail, Lee, coming up the uh, coming up that mountain. What, what mountain is this? This is the uh, backside of Magic Mountain. This okay. is the old Timberside uh, ski area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's privately held now and owned. Uh, by a local uh, Vermont family, yeah, and uh, they allow us uh, use of this trail along the top side. Right, and you can come up here and visit this crazy structure. Yeah, right? this is cool. This was uh, built with uh, one of those uh, reality shows there. I think it was like Extreme Cabins or something. It was uh -huh. on like uh, the Discovery Channel or something. Yeah, a couple of years ago, they came up here. This is the actual turnstile from one of the old uh, lifts. It came up here and turned and. 
They actually built this cabin off that and utilized, obviously, a lot of the old uh, parts from the mountain. So this is basically used by uh, locals and uh, tourists uh, that come up uh, either on snowmobiles or they skin up with their skis or they uh, come up with their snowboards and uh, they basically hang out and enjoy it and uh, beautiful view off to uh, yeah, New Hampshire I'll, here. I'll tell you, it, it, it's like, so which, which, which direction are we looking? We're looking dead east right there east. Into, into New Hampshire, oh, exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's go gorgeous long range view. Uh, they've got some obstacles and stuff out there for the snowboarders to, uh, to go over. And they incorporate a lot of cool features into this thing. Yeah, it's a so. cool place to come. It's a 12 month sport. You know, we have our riding season when there's snow, but there's trail construction, trail maintenance and you know there's a sense of satisfaction when you can walk away from that and, and create a, a trail system like we have be part of it and uh, it's just been a great deal of fun for me I love it among his many duties Stan serves as chairman of the vast safety committee which promotes safe riding practices among snowmobilers one of the organization's latest outreach programs aims to eliminate the long-established use of hand signals among passing riders. Uh, several years ago, I don't even know where the origin was that people started using hand signals for oncoming traffic. So as you met snowmobilers, and you, you met a few people today, as snowmobilers are coming at you, they started using hand signals where the lead person in a group, in our group today, we had five riders. So the first one in the line would hold up four fingers. And you think about doing that with a glove on, it's not that easy to see, especially difficult to see with mittens. Uh, so four. The next line, the one in line would be three, then two, then one, and the last in line would be a closed fist. When you think about it, why do you need to do the countdown? There may be some value to the first one in line, raising a hand, a quick wave to identify the fact that there's others behind you. But that closed fist is very often followed by another line of four, five, six, ten snowmobiles that aren't part of the group, but that individual is unaware of it. And that signal means nothing. To oncoming traffic, a closed fist does not mean, okay, now the trail is open and I can go ride to the right, I can go ride to the left, I can ride in the middle, I can cut off a corner doesn't mean that. It means nothing. When you are operating a snowmobile, you need to always assume that there's somebody coming the other way and that they're going to be in your side of the trail. So you have to be in control. The other aspect of that is, is that if your hand's in the air and you do need to make a quick stop, your brake is down on the handlebar and that delay from here to here might mean 20 feet of travel on the trail. And that's the difference between getting stopped safely and hitting something. Around noon, we entered Molly Beattie State Forest and stopped at a former ranger's cabin built in the 1930s by the Depression-era Civilian Conservation Corps. The cabin now serves as a warming hut maintained by the Grafton Outing Club. Waiting to welcome us were fellow snowmobilers Dick Jewett and Ivor Stevens, who had kindly built a roaring fire for us and had hot dogs, chips, and s'mores ready to cook. You are here, Mark. And what trail did we come in on? Like, well, left or the right? well we, we've kind of rode this whole section of trail today. Okay. This, yeah. Since we started this morning, we've been about 32 miles. What I really enjoy about snowmobiling is the uh, distancing and the ability to get out into the woods and get into places. I can look up on top of a mountain and 10 minutes later, I can be there a lot of times. Um, it just gives me an opportunity to get to places that normally I would never ever be able to uh, have access to. Snowmobiling over hill and dale in sub-zero temperatures can be draining. So after my long ride with Stan Swanier and Lee Whiting, I was glad to check into my room at the Echo Lake Inn, which has hosted weary visitors to the Okemo Valley region since 1799. Well, welcome to the Echo Lake Inn. It's uh, a structure that's been around since uh, well, well over 200 years, and it's arguably one of the three oldest continuously operated inns in Vermont. Uh, I'm the 14th owner in a very long chain. Uh, some folks lasted 35, 40 years, some lasted about that many days. So uh, innkeeping, uh, you either like it, I like it, or you don't, and you find out fairly quickly. Um, 
But uh, this part of the inn right here, uh, you're in right now, is built in 1840. Uh, if you're lucky enough to go down to the basement, uh, we've got a pool table down there, a really nice old style tavern. Uh, that goes back to 1751. And then the oldest part of the inn, way down on the end, is uh, 1792. So a lot of history here, no right angles involved. Uh, everything is a, 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 every room is different. Uh, it was just 10 years ago, we got a bathroom in every room. So now every room has a bathroom, flat screen TV, air conditioning, but it's also got an antique. And there's unique wallpaper in every single room. Uh, you won't find any one of them that's the same. Well, the Echo Lake Inn restaurant has a, uh, a good history, a, a wonderful history. Uh, we, in the last two to three years, we've maintained a four and a half star rating. Uh, the food here is exceptional. Uh, you won't be disappointed. We stick with our favorites because people come back specifically for them. For instance, the duck we've been getting from the same farm for 34 years up in Canada. Uh, Maple Leaf Farms, a beautiful farm. We put out a wonderful made to order breakfast every day. Uh, I know you experienced that yourself, so, um, but yeah, nothing but pure Vermont maple syrup. The blueberry pancakes are fantastic. The French toast, omelet varies every day. So uh, you pretty much have a request, let us know, and we'll find a way to make it happen for you. So in Vermont, uh, the, the uh, farm to table movement is very strong. And uh, we're happy to say that we're in a leadership position there. Over 40% of what we put out comes from local folks. And uh, that includes everything from uh, pork chops to lettuce. The cheese comes from either Crowley cheese, Cabot cheese, or Plymouth artisan cheese, all right around the corner. Central Vermont is well known for downhill skiing, of course, and one of the region's most venerable ski and snowboard venues is Magic Mountain in the town of Londonderry. It may not be the biggest or fanciest ski facility in the Okemo Valley region, but Magic offers an impressive variety of terrain, including some challenging steeps and acres of glades. But more important, it has soul. Tell me about the history of Magic Mountain. Yeah, well, Magic was started in uh, 1960 by Hans Storner. He's a Swiss ski instructor who had also been into filmmaking, and he wanted to create a place that reminded him of his home in the Alps. And he found this mountain, which is it's kind of like a northern Vermont mountain here in southern Vermont. It's got steeper terrain. It's got a lot of different variety in terms of the, the valleys in it plus the, the ridge lines that stick out, and it just reminded Hans of kind of skiing in the Swiss Alps. So that's what he started here, and then uh, kind of had this concept for you know a whole village that was Swiss oriented. So everything he designed from the, the original lodge uh, to uh, eventually real estate, they had a whole village with uh, houses, all Swiss themed. Yeah, so it looked like a little Swiss village. Yeah, it looked like a little Swiss village and uh, it was a really interesting concept because that's what a lot of people try to do now. That's, that's the beauty of this place. It really hasn't changed since Hans was actually designing the trail network here. So from kind of the windy, twisty trails that you get on the east side of the mountain to the steeps on the west, he designed all those trails and we haven't changed them over the years. It's a very intimate experience and it's also just interest. It's more interesting skiing and that's what we like about it here. There's a heritage here of families who have been here since the 60s who've you know, grown up, have kids of their own, bring the next generation along. The terrain is pretty tough, but once you start here, this is probably the best place to, you know, build your ability and have a lifetime of skiing here. Anyway, welcome to the summit of Magic Mountain. So we got the, the red chair behind us, uh, which uh, top to bottom, 1500 vertical skiing you get. So we like the nice slow lift. It gives us a little time to uh, catch our breath and uh, refresh the legs on the way up. <laughs> That's right. And also have great conversations with, you know, family, friends, whatever. It's a really nice time after, our, you know, 1500 vertical feet down, some gnarly terrain, so. Yeah, so uh, how many trails do you have on the mountain? Uh, 50, including the on-map glades, so 50 yeah. trails. On the way up, I saw all kinds of kids going through the woods, and they're having a ball. Yeah, there, there's just so much tree skiing, and uh, it's this is one of the, the standout areas for tree skiing in Vermont, in really the Northeast. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so here we are at the T-Bar. The it's something we just put in, and uh, it's a great new food and beverage spot out here on the mountain, right toward the base. The reason we called it the T-Bar is because this uh, area right up here and up show off was the original lift that Hans Sorner put in in 1960. It was a T-Bar uh, and serviced this trail, and from there, all of this was then built upon and created. You know, I grew up three years old. Uh, my parents would come up here. We oriented at that point in the 60s and 70s to Stratton. We usually had season passes over there. And, uh, but we would come over to Magic and we'd also go over to Timber Ridge on the other side. So just a great area with a, you know, you got three mountains, Bromley, Magic, Stratton, all within 10 miles of each other, all very different mountains different characters, different trail types, different steepness, easy, things of that sort. So really a, a special area. It used to be called the Golden Triangle of skiing. And uh, so we love it here, yeah. Hey Tom, well, here we, here we are at the Nelson Family Learning Center, uh, named after actually one of the former owners in the early 2000s who helped bring Magic back and was instrumental in us uh, purchasing the place. State-of-the-art Magic Carpet Learning Area for kids and you know, first timers. So it's it's right out of the base area, which we like, but yet separate from high traffic areas. So people can just learn over here, kind of in peace and quiet. Not be freaked out and by some <laughs> crazy snowboarder who <laughs> blasted by you. Exactly. Miles an hour. Exactly. So it's been a really great addition. Really, you know, our we've got a great uh, ski school staff and things of that sort. So whether it's you're old, young, in between. You know, they can get you going here, uh, both as a learn to in terms of skiing, but also if you want to get your skills better for going into the woods or going down a trail, maybe you normally wouldn't because it's got a lot of moguls. Great staff for doing that because we got the terrain uh, yeah. to back it. The vibe here is, is that way too, just people are you know pretty cool, pretty relaxed. And again, our li lifts the way they are and the trail system the way it is, you just don't get overcrowded slopes, which can be intimidating for anyone. Uh, you know, when you have to dodge people and worry about getting hit, you just don't really have that here. Uh, but the, the, other, the other thing I think I like about this mountain and always attracted us was that it's all so centralized. So you don't have all these pods in very distant places. You got the one lodge, and you, yet you've got all your lifts right here. You've got a learning area right here. You've got the night terrain park right here. So you're not losing anyone. Everyone's right here. They're all, you may take a different way down, but you can meet up back at the lift. Right, so, all, roads, all roads lead to the same exactly. spot. It's the type of place where you come and you go, either, either it's like, oh, there are no high speeds. I'm, yeah, this is a place I'm not coming to, or it's like, instant love mm -hmm. it's like love at first sight we've had people who've one day been here and said jeff i'm buying a condo somewhere around here this is where i'm coming really? after one day yeah you know what i also love is like uh, as we walked around and skied today people just keep coming up to you and say hey jeff how's it going it's like you know everybody here it's yeah. like like you said it was like a family it is, it is like a family and mm -hmm. you know they feel like they have a part of this place and they do yeah, so it's nice. that's great. You don't get that at some of those bigger resorts, I'll tell you. And uh, people are a little more tense, too, at those places. Yeah, you know, they get all caught up in, you know, trying to get there and trying to beat the crowds and trying to do this. And it's like, yeah, you just come here, you can take a deep breath. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, leave whatever you came with, yeah. you know, and just enjoy the beauty and the, you know, the, the mountain, the being outdoors and good friends. Yeah, well, hey, man. Well. Well, thanks again. I, uh, I I really, really love this place. And uh, cheers, Tom. <laughs> thanks for coming to Magic. Uh, thanks for showing me Magic Mountain. Yeah, this is fun. wait. You know what? I I I I didn't know this place existed, and uh, you gave me a, a whirlwind tour, man. It's uh, it's a beautiful spot, and I love the vibe that you have here. Oh, thanks. It, In recent years, fat tire biking has emerged as yet another way to get outside and enjoy the winter landscape. Not far from Magic Mountain, in the town of Grafton, the Grafton Trails and Outdoor Center offers both groomed and single track trails where you can ride in the snow, provided you have the right bike for the job. 
Um, Grafton Trails and Outdoor Center is an outdoor center located in Grafton, Vermont, and um, we offer cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, and fat biking in the winter, as well as tubing. We have 15 kilometers of cross-country ski trails, um, which are open for hiking in the summer, and about 15 kilometers of snowshoe trails as well. We have a full fleet of cross-country ski, classic cross-country skis. We have a full fleet of snowshoes as well. Now we have a rental fleet of fat bikes. People bring their own fat bikes. So these are our rental bikes. We have the Kona Woes. Uh, we have 13 gears in the back, none in the front. We have hydraulic disc brakes in the front and back and four inch fat tire. Yep, and it looks like it's really deflated. <laughs> exactly, a lot of people come in and say that exact thing. It looks flat, but we run them about eight pounds of pressure just because that gives you more grip in the mm -hmm. looser snow. Mm -hmm. And what are and what are these? Are these actual like um, snow tires, like studs on those? Yeah, we have um, snow tires for ours, studded snow tires. And these are the same studs you'd find on your car in the parking lot. So the groomed trail is uh, makes for sweet riding. It does. It, that's why we allow, um, some places don't allow fat biking on their groomed trails, but uh, we're not causing any damage, as you can see. And, mm -hmm. and so these are also shared by the by the cross-country skiers. So obviously yep. there's the track right yep. there. And that's, we just asked the fat bikers to stay out of the track. And other than that, they pretty much have free reign. Yeah. It's a nice, nice wide open, uh, wide open trail here. Yeah, wide enough you can bike next to someone, have a conversation. Yeah, Come on. yeah, it's very relaxing. Well, let's go uh, check out that scenic, scenic overlook you were talking about. Yeah, village overlook, let's do it. Grafton, I assume? Yep, that's the village of Grafton you see. Some of the buildings in town and then the two church steeples you see. One is the brick church and the other one is the white church right at the top of Main Street. I'll tell you, pretty as a postcard, Bob. <laughs> People come to, to Vermont to see, that's for sure. That's right, you know, I could, I could just imagine it in the fall too with the, with the colors and everything. Yes, this is a picturesque spot in the fall, winter, summer, year round. Going on 11 generations now oh, in Grafton, so it's been here quite a while. Wow, man. So when does that, you know when that dates back to? Like what year? Early 1700s. Yeah. Um, my family farm was built up on Fisher Hill, um, early 1700s. We were the first house in Grafton with electricity. Um, the first doctor in Grafton was a fisher. And we're still here. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I, I hope you continue to be here. And uh, do too. <laughs> and uh, hey, thanks a lot for taking me uh, mountain biking of around course. here. It's a beautiful country. You're lucky to be able to grow up here and grow up here and live here. I agree. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. No matter what particular form of winter activity you like to pursue, the Okemo Valley region has a place to do it. Usually in a beautiful setting with plenty of creature comforts nearby. If you're the type of person who embraces winter in New England, you'll feel right at home.